everybody, I'm Sarah Wolf. Welcome back again to another Guild Wars 2 video. I'm going to be going over the Swords Necromancer. Now, this was the other build, or I guess weapon set for a class I was kind of interested in. And uh, let's just right dive into it, shall we? Um, once again, um, kind of getting back into Guild Wars 2 again. And we're kind of getting the vibe and everything, like we said before. Um, so we're kind of diving into it and feeling our way out. Now, we just did the uh, Guardian build before. Now I'm going to do the Necromancer build today. Um, now, the double sword thing is kind of interesting. I will say I don't really like how slow the attacks are, so I am going to recommend doing a axe sword build. I've always been a big fan of axes for the Necromancer. A lot of self-healing like that that you can do. And uh, that's just so it's overall pretty strong. All right. So the build I have for the, uh, for the uh, axe sword ability for a sword secondary um, is Spite, Soul Reaping, and reaper now spike gives you the kind of the axing ability there i believe uh yep so this one kind of involves deal increased strike damage to foes with no boons uh, focus and axe skills recharge faster so again this recharges your axe skills faster excuse me deal increased strike damage while downed um inflict vulnerability when you strike a foe below health threshold <laughs> these are all thresholds now this one adds chilled this one adds might and this one uh, increases strike hold again when the blow threshold. The reason for that is is because this build is a big DOT build. Once you hit your launch your first attack strike, and you're and you're depleting the enemy health on a flat DOT, which is damage over time. Not a condition wise, but this is kind of like think about hexes for Guild Wars One, where you're layering hexes on top of conditions for a heavy de degeneration. But instead of the degeneration being capped at ten, you're actually layering it with damage over time with condition damage over time. So they actually combine and actually increase the amount of damage you can do together. And since the initial hit of that decreases down to below fifty percent. You're going to increase the regular attack strength that you have to finish them off with the regular other abilities. Now we're going to go back again to the whole uh, chilled portion of that. I think this is the bottom section down here. Yeah, so this is now amplifying the fear ability, which is actually on your five skill for the sword. Now when you cause fear, uh, where is it? Whenever you cause uh, inflict fear, you also cause chill. Well, to piggyback off that is when you cause chill, you actually cause bleeding over time for eight, three, eight and three quarter seconds. Well, we actually have multiple abilities that cause uh, chill here. We actually have uh, we have uh, Gormanized, which is the uh, secondary hit of this ability, which caused chilled. I believe, right? Yeah. And then you also have the uh, Chill of Death. Uh, when you uh, strike a target with Chill of 50%, you're going to have Chilled. So once they get down to that 50% threshold again, now that degeneration is going to continue in the form of now bleeding. So it's going to stack on top of each other. You have the degen, the degen comes out, goes through 50%, and you're going to continue to degenerate them uh, with the bleeding now. So that degeneration effect keeps going on. And you also have the Chilled ability on them, so they're moving at 66% of their actual original speed. Or 33% of the original speed, rather. Um, so that really works. And now with Cold Shoulder coming off of that Reaper ability, you're actually increasing that shield duration even further, allowing you to get more hits in from the um, trip characters probably running away from you. And then Siphon Damage, we're also causing Siphon Damage because all our abilities, we want to keep healing ourselves because we are actually partially sacrificing some health once in a while like that in order to do a little bit more damage. Now, you can do Sword Sword with this. Um, I'm recommending this because I don't really want to dive into uh, close range because the Sword 3 ability actually makes you teleport to the target. But even then, the Sword ability is not exactly... Um, having you um, attack melee. You're still attacking at range. And it's actually at the same about range as you would with an axe. It's still around 900. Um, so and with this, pairing with this, we also have further abilities that we have down here. One of which is Suffer, which again causes that chill condition. And because we're causing that chill condition, that's also going to cause the bleeding to happen and increase the damage like that. We also have your all weakings, which weakens target and increases mind on yourself. And we also have nothing can save you against siphoning and vulnerability. We have vulnerability attacks and also damage that becomes unblockable uh, as well. Now this is because we actually are increasing our shout ability. 
There it is. Ah, oh, there it is. Uh, so shouts you now. You're safe in health. Uh, now safe and now safe with health, and the effects are increased on foes within melee range. So if you're in closer range, they will actually do more damage to them, um, and you're actually siphoning health each time. So you're actually getting the health back again. So again, I would recommend double swords with shouts, um, kind of piggyback off of each other. Um, but you really need to be in that close range because these only work within 600 to 240 range. Swords and axes are work at 900 range. Now that's third third sword ability will get you in range of attacking and doing a melee kind of combat, um, and then you're kind of nuking everything kind of around you. But it's damage over time, so it's not a hard nuke. It's a soft nuke, I guess you could say, um, for lack of a better term. Um, but it does work pretty darn well, and I would recommend definitely stacking the two skill on the axes with the. Uh, four and five skill of the sword, along with the DOTs over here, causing that bleeding, hard damage over time. And it, it kind of just stacks on top of each other. It looks really, really great. Uh, all right. Well, that's my uh, little analysis on the Necromancer with a double sword. Now, I would prefer the axe-sword combination. Uh, sword-sword is viable, but does put you in a little bit of a predicament being at close range. Again, but the life siphon, the health siphons that you're doing and constantly healing yourself kind of makes you a soak um but it, it will help you it will work in the long run but uh, that's overall what i think of this build right hope you enjoy the build and i am super wolf and i hope you have a very good day bye bye